Battletoads is one of those games that I really like, but I've never actually beaten. And if you've ever played it, you probably know exactly why that is. Developed by Rare before their partnership with Nintendo, Battletoads revolves around three space-traveling toads by the names of Rash, Zitz, and Pimple. Ew. One day while cruising about, Pimple and their friend Princess Angelica get captured by the Dark Queen, and it's up to Rash and Zitz to save them. The graphics are nice and colorful and really well done for the system, and the character animations are nice and smooth, as are those found in the backgrounds of each level. Ooh, nice fake parallax scrolling. Pretty. Level 1 is a sort of beat em up style stage that has you punching baddies, knocking down robots, and transforming your skull into a set of ram's horns in order to headbutt the ever living shit out of the poor unfortunate soul on the receiving end. Shortly after that, you're rappelling down a shaft full of robots, toad eating plants, and some really pissed off birds, and wait, did that just turn into a wrecking ball? What the fuck? So, yeah, as you've probably noticed, this game is just a little bit out there, what with the buff toads, body transformations, and whatnot, but that's part of what gives the game its charm. And then level 3 highlights the game's biggest flaw that it's completely unfair. The first part of this level isn't too bad, going back to the beat-em-up action of the first stage, but then we get to the most infamous part of this entire game, the speeder bikes. Holy shit is this section hard. For those who aren't in the know, you're tasked with riding this hover bike thingy at blinding speed while weaving in and out of obstacles, hitting ramps to jump over death chasms, and dodging whatever the hell these things are. And this is the point where most people, myself included, run out of lives and quit playing. In fact, I've never actually made it past this section of the game. Until today. With an emulator and save states. <clears throat> so, yeah, I technically cheated, but seeing as I've been banging my head against this section for over 10 years at this point, I'm just tired of trying to do it legitimately. And besides, I've heard that this game actually gets easier once you beat this section. <laughs> It does not. Though, what I want to know is, why is this section so infamously difficult for so many people? Well, after about an hour or so of emulator escapades and a little bit of frame-by-frame -frame analysis, I think I've come to an answer. My hypothesis is that the reason for this is because the obstacles, these little wall thingies, actually come at you faster than you're able to react, and the only way you're going to be able to get past them is through lots and lots of practice and frame-perfect button presses. So the first thing I did was record the game in its native 60 frames per second, and then I dropped that footage into a 60 FPS sequence in Premiere Pro. I found a section towards the end where the obstacles are moving at their fastest and counted how many frames they're on screen from the time they first appear to the time you get hit by them, assuming your character is as far to the left as possible. From the moment the obstacle becomes visible until the moment you get hit, 18 frames of animation occur. Since this footage is recorded at 60 FPS, that means that from first appearance until death, the obstacle is only visible for 0.3 seconds. So now my question is, how fast can a human react? Well, reaction time, in this case visual reaction time, varies from person to person while also being affected by age, lifestyle, how much sleep or caffeine you've had, etc. But it averages around a quarter of a second, or 0.25, which, adjusting to our 60 FPS timescale, translates to 15 frames. Which means from the moment the obstacle appears to the moment your hands actually press up or down on the d-pad, you're left with only 3 frames, 0 0.05, or just 1 20th of a second to get out of the way. Holy shit! Now, obviously, in practice, the game actually isn't that brutal. For one thing, most of the obstacles in the speeder bike section telegraph their appearance beforehand to give you more time to react. And apart from the final stretch, you're moving at a much slower, more reasonable speed. Plus, the final stretch always has obstacles alternating up and down positions, so you're actually able to react to them before they're even visible. But I thought it'd be fun to do a little math today, for some reason. And now that I know that trying to react to these things in time is a fool's errand, I can work on developing a rhythm for dodging them without even thinking. And maybe, just maybe, I can make it through this level for real. Or not.